this is a two player zero sum game uh, and we're going to try and analyse it. Basically have a look at this. If you're player one you've got two possible options. You can play one or you can play strategy two. If you're player two, two options as well. If you, if both of you use strategy one then player two ends up winning four. Here player one wins five. Here player one wins two and here player two wins three. So these are player one's options, these are player two options. Uh, the question is then, what Who's favourite to win this game if you, you if you play it over a, uh, a number of times? Who, who, which which player would you rather be? Now the first thing to look for is to see if there's a saddle point. Now, quite clearly there isn't going to be one. Player one's worst case scenario here is that the score will be minus four. Here his worst case scenario is minus three, so he can guarantee minus three as his play safe strategy here. So player two, player one would play two as his play safe strategy. Player two wants to we make the numbers negative so 2 is the worst case scenario if he uses 1 and 5 is the worst case scenario if he plays 2 so his play safe strategy is to use strategy 1 and it's 2 so play safe strategies are 2 for player 1 and 1 for player 2 leading to a score of 2 so player 1 looks like the favourite from this point of view but of course player 2 is not stupid if he sees that player 1 is using strategy 2 all the time he'll use strategy 2 and then player 1 is not stupid, if he sees player 2 using strategy 2, he'll use strategy 1 and will end up going round in a cycle. Now the point is, if they vary their strategies, how should they vary them and who then is the favourite? Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this from player 1's point of view. Player 1's going to vary his strategy, he's going to play this a proportion P of the time and this then 1 minus P. Those are the probabilities that he plays each strategy. We don't know what the best value of P would be though, that's what we're trying to find. Let's say that player two player two uses strategy one all the time. That would be a stupid thing to do and it would it would lead to a great thing for player one. But let's have a look. Player one if he if he varied his strategy the score would be minus four P plus two times one minus P minus 4 p of the time plus 2 1 minus p of the time and that gives the value of the game as if player 1 used that strategy all the time as 2 minus 6 p now player 2 isn't that stupid so player 2 will will do everything he can to make sure that the value of the game is actually less than 2 minus 6 p less than or equal to at least uh, what if player 2 uses strategy 2 all the time now the value of the game is 5p minus 3 1 minus p 5p minus 3 times 1 minus p gives us a total of 8p minus 3 again player 2 will try to do everything he can to make sure that that value of the game is lower than that by varying his strategy so the value of the game is less than or equal to 8p minus 3 now what player 1 now needs to do is to make the value of P such that his worst case scenario is as big as possible. I'm going to draw on these axes here. This is just just like axes normally, uh, except I'm only going from 0 to 1. So I've made these sort of rugby post type things. So this is the P axis from 0 to 1, and this is the value axis. Uh, so I'm going to draw these two inequalities. Value is less than or equal to 2 minus 6P would look like this. And I'm going to this from 0 to 1. So 2 minus 6p from 0 to 1 would look like that. Uh, now, player, the value is less than or equal to that, so let's get rid of all of this. That can't possibly be more than that. And the value is less than or equal to 8p minus 3 would look like this. And again, I shade the bit above that. And what we can see that we can change the value of P, but it must remain in this feasible region. So the best strategy for player one is to use is, is that point there. That's the maximum value of the game from player one's point of view. And we can now just read off the value of P and the value of V. Uh, that's where these two meet. So basically what we're trying to find there is when does 8P minus 3 equal 2 minus 6P? and that we get 14p equals 5. 
So P is 5 fourteenths, and if P is 5 fourteenths, then we can substitute that in to find the value of the game. Uh, 28 fourteenths minus 30 fourteenths is minus 2 fourteenths, which I'll simplify. So the value of the game looks like it's minus 1 seventh. In other words, I would rather be player 2. They win, on average, one pound every seven games, essentially, on average. Let's just check what player two best, best, player two's best strategy would be by looking at the playing that Q of the time and this one minus Q of the time. So it's exactly the same argument now, that if player one was stupid and used strategy one all the time, then the value of the game would be minus four times Q plus five times one minus Q. That's if he played one all the time. Those would be the scores. And that simplifies to, what does that simplify to? 5 minus 9q. Uh, now, if he played 2 all the time, 2q minus 3, 1 minus q. 2q minus 3 times 1 minus q. And that simplifies to, what does that simplify to? Uh, don't tell me, 5q minus 3, I think. And now we get the same sort of idea. That's a really bad, both of these are really bad strategies for, for player one. He's not going to be quite as bad as that. So player one will do everything he can to make sure that the value of the game is greater than this. So 5q, 5 minus 9q would look like this between 0 and 1. And we need, and, and We'll do everything we can to make sure that the value of the game is actually more than that from player one's point of view. And 5q minus 3 would look like this between 0 and 1. It's the same argument here, scrub that out. And again, we're looking for this point here to find the best strategy. The value of q is here, and the value of the game is there. So the value of q is where these two equal, so we end up with 5q minus 3 equals 5 minus 9q. In other words, 14q equals 8, so q equals 8 fourteenths. And if q is 8 is 4 sevenths, as I've simplified it, then we get the value of the game is 20 sevenths minus 21 sevenths which is minus one seventh. In other words, as we should do, the value of the game is minus one seventh. So in this game, I'd rather play as player two, but there's not much in it, and it's actually quite well disguised that player two is a slight favorite in here. Uh, in another clip, we'll look at ideas of, of dominance. There's no dominance in this game because neither neither player has a, a an always a strategy which is always better than the other, uh, and how to deal with more complicated 3x3 three three matrices.